Hello everybody, and welcome back to the Sonic Unleashed playthrough. Um, here we are in the extras, where we are going to take on all of the extra acts that you can do in the game. Because not only do you have um, the act ones, and in the case of um, Aptos, the act twos, you also um, have act threes, and in both day and night, you've got a variety of missions to do. Um, all of them are decent challenges, I have to say. Um, some of them it did a pain getting to them. I mean, I can't say I'm a fan of uh, Aptos Act 3's location, because you can quite easily die um, trying to get to it and leaving it. Um, but that's what happens, I guess. So, Windmill Isle Act 3 is basically spent entirely upon rails. Um, quite a decent challenge, I have to say. It's a running theme with most of the um, extra missions. It's because they require you to uh, be at your pinnacle of uh, platforming prowess. So, have fun. Because it's not easy. Especially considering you need to be going at at least a certain speed to be able to get across the rails successfully. Also, it's very, very easy to die. And getting that moon medal is evil. I should know, I, I, I did actually get that moon medal um, when I played the game the last time. And, oh, it's a pain. Because you've got to uh, t sw switch rails at just the right moment to be able to get it. And, oh boy. You know, as a fact, you are going to want to uh, level up Sonic's speed. Because um, it's going to be quite helpful to you in a mission later on. So... Get prepared. Now, one thing that I haven't didn't show off was that you can replay um, Aptos Act One, um, which was the tutorial stage, by just running to the end of that bridge, and it's around the uh, little house thingy. And now let's take on Windmill Isle Night Act Two. Now, this little blighter is hidden behind uh, this wooden door. And it, it's an interesting level. Um, essentially what it is, is um, it's a circular room with 12 doors. I believe it's 12 doors, it might be a little bit more. Uh, okay, no, it's definitely more than 12. Oh no, uh, one, two, three, uh, close enough. Um, essentially, what you've got to do is, um, open them and uh, get the, uh, get the blocks and put them into the, uh, stone pedestal thingies. And that is how you beat the stage. There is a bit extra in it, but um, essentially what you're going to want to do if you want to get everything in the level is just open every single uh, door. And here we actually get to fight little fighters. Um, the only place where we've seen these uh, fellas is uh, in the boss battles, piloting Eggman's creations. But here they are actually fighting us. Which is quite cool. They're annoying little squirts, I'll tell you what, but... It, it's quite nice to have 
just an enemy that doesn't get used. Well, I say that, it's quite annoying really, but... It's interesting that that enemy exists. As something to actually defeat. Now, I may have pointed this out before, but, um... The egg fighters, their hands are little fighters, which is quite cool. Bit difficult to see, kind of, in-game. But, you can certainly see it on the model. You can also probably see that the little fighters do look a bit like hands, so... Especially when they're lying on the ground. Definitely when they're lying on the ground. Now, some of the um, doors are kind of useless to your purposes in that they only give you um, coins, coins, rings. Um, some of them are a bit more useful in providing medals and stones for you to put into the pedestals. But, um, yeah, so pretty much if you just follow the doors that I open, then you are going to collect everything that you need to. And only have to fight the amount of enemies that you need to. But I do believe if you open up the doors that just have rings in them, then you still have to fight enemies, so you get through a bit quicker by going this route. Annoyingly, you don't get any points off any of these enemies. Annoying little blighters, I tell you what. That's it. I like how, um... I'm immediately... making reference to the playthrough slash walkthrough that's going to be happening next. Um, it's a very subtle reference um, that you'll only recognise if you played the game slash know it like I do. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty great, great game, I'll tell you what. Uh, and now I bet you're all thinking, what on earth is he talking about? But well, you'll see shortly. Unless you are from the future, in which case you will already know what it is, because you'll be watching this after I've... Well, if, you, if you're watching this after, in like, a year's time, you'll be able to see what that next playthrough walkthrough is before I've even... Well... Yeah, time travel. It's confusing. It's, it's filled with timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly stuff. Yeah, just, just referencing Doctor Who now, which is awesome, although recent series have not been particularly fantastic. I miss David Tennant as the Doctor. He, 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 David Tennant was an amazing Doctor. Like, seriously. He's also amazing as Benedict in um, Much Ado About Nothing. And I can't wait to see him as... Um, Richard the Second in Richard the Second. See all, all the Shakespeare. And now we have a wonderful Titan in an incredibly enclosed space. Like seriously, how much more enclosed can you be? Thankfully, you're not going to get um, killed by being thrown out of the area, but. Jeez. And now you can see here what I mean by the fact that it only seems to be in Eggman Land that the quick time event for the Titans is stupidly sped up. And it's always just that last attack. I mean, I don't know whether I showed off any of it, but... Pretty much the reason that I ended up cutting those down so much was because I spent so long trying to get the critical finish to get a good rank on Eggman Land, and ke I kept getting hit because I fail at life. Um, and it was just ridiculous.
because it was always the last quick time event on the thing that I just kept missing. And it's because there's a weird, really, really weird speed to it. Now let's, uh, purchase some souvenirs, I think. Might as well just be nice to... Good old, good old Professor Pickle. Now, do believe if you get the um, Sunday Supreme and give quite a few of them to Chip, then you can get the um, Best Friends Forever uh, achievement, which is quite cool. And I think in doing that, you are more likely to get the extra videos that you can unlock um, in Holoska. Chunan and Apatos. No, not Apatos. Adabas. There we go. Now, Spigonia doesn't actually have any extra Werehog stages from what I recall. Um, you've just got uh, two day stages. Which is really awesome. Could be wrong on that. I will see shortly if I'm right on that. But um, pretty sure. Because pretty much what you're going to see is you're going to see um, an entire con continents. Well, no, entire countries. extra missions together. But yeah, now, technically we're doing this out of order, but Act 3 is closer than Act 2, so I'm going for Act 3 first. Oh, that rooftop run music. Oh, I love it so. Now, the awesome thing for this is you've got to collect all the chows. Which is their only appearance in the game. At least, I mean, it's the only appearance in the game, excluding when Toss and his Chow puppet. It's, it's the only appearance of actual Chows. Now, I believe in the um, extra DLC levels that um, they put out, um, there were some more of these Chow collecting missions. Um, but I don't have the DLC. Um, but I think mostly what that DLC was was it was um, hard mode levels essentially. Cheeky little devil, just hiding there, trying to get me in trouble, and now I've just messed myself over. Because essentially what you're meant to do is. Um, attack the egg fighter and use him as a um, leapfrog, essentially, onto the spring. But I failed. I still got an S rank though. Oh yeah. I feel ultra badass. And hopefully. Um, by the end of the playthrough, we will uh, have a level, level 7 moon medal counter as well. But, considering how uh, poor my medal collection is in day stages, um, it, it's kind of slightly maybe doubtful. Although there are a lot of stages, so there's a lot you can do. Now, if you're wondering what I'm doing right now, um, I'm trying to get that uh, art book, if I recall correctly. Damn. Yeah, screw it. Um, basically, the next act is um, in this area here, but we need to change it to night to be able to get in. Which is slightly annoying, but... What can you do? It's 
a nice little um, thing of exploration, if anything. Because it's, I think... Yeah, Sp Spagonia is the only hub world in the game that has this uh, different um, section to it. I think pretty much every single other um, hub world is just one continuous um, room. <laughs> Can't believe it took me so long to say room, but uh, yeah. Um, so it, it's nice that all, all of the hub worlds are slightly different in their composition. Um, so you have this where there's loads of different compartments with this sewer section. Because it is a sewer section. You, you can't escape that. Um, and then you have uh, Holosco with its massive pool in the middle. Um, you have Chunan with all the bamboo rushes and the cliffs. You've got Shamar with its um, weird structures. And now we've got uh, Rooftop Runner Axe 2, which is evil. This level is re really quite hard. Like, you have no idea until you play it. It's not helped by Sonic's incredibly loose controls. Um, I'm pretty sure it would be a lot easier to play with easier controls. Well, with Generations controls. Um, but... It's a great challenge. Um, I will warn you though, you'll probably lose quite a lot of lives. Um, this. I know I did. It's, it's just the way it goes. Makes me sad though that this is going to be the last time we hear the wonderful rooftop run day. Now the one thing that I will give this level um, is that it does give you uh, a decent amount of uh, one-ups throughout the stage. Um, so if you make sure to keep grabbing them, then you are going to be in a much better position. Although the last section is still absolutely monstrous. <laughs> Also, this is pretty evil. It, 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 all those bottomless pits. Um, it's just not particularly fun. Also, being so close to death is uh, a slightly terrifying experience. And here we go, the last third of the level. Because uh, I'm really glad that they gave you um, checkpoints at the end of every third, because otherwise this... I, I hesitate to say I wouldn't have beaten this level. Um, I think I might have thrown my controller at a wall. Um, I don't do that often, but um, I probably would have. I mean, that right there was probably one of, if not the single most annoying point in the level. Um, it's literally just because um, the platforms fall, so you get hit, and if you don't get up soon enough, or if the thing comes back and hits you twice, then you're dead. And I am not a great fan of that type of gameplay style. Um, well, not gameplay style, game design. Um, but still. So... We have finished everything for uh, Spagonia, and it's time to head on off into a new continent. So, 
I think um, we should get right on that um, just as soon as we leave Spagonia. It's not the last time we're going to see Spagonia, but um, unfortunately we are not going to hear the wonderful, wonderful tone, well, tune of uh, Rooftop Ron again. <laughs> I have to say, Rooftop Run is my favourite, one of my favourite songs in the game. I started by saying it is my favourite. Um, I think it's tied between that and endless possibilities. Um, in its and world adventure, they're all tied, really. 